Off went Heracles, determined to accomplish this labour, too, however unpleasant and difficult it might be, and after careful examination he hit upon a scheme. But first of all he went to King Augeas, and without saying anything about Eurystheus declared, I'll undertake to clear your cattle stables, yard and all, in a single day, while your cows are out on the pasture, if you'll promise to give me a tenth of your herd in payment. Believing that what he offered was quite impossible, Aegeus agreed to the bargain and swore solemnly to fulfill his sort of it if the task was performed. Heracles at once knocked horns in either end of the great stable building, and by digging a short channel turned the courses of the rivers Alpheus and Peneus, which flowed close by, so that both streams ran in through one gap and out through the other. The strong current of water cleared out the thirty years' accumulation of dung in a very short time, and Heracles had turned back the rivers into their normal beds and rebuilt the gaps in the stable walls before the herds were driven home in the evening. Aegeus, however, refused to fulfill his side of the bargain, and Heracles had to return some years later to punish him. He did not reap any reward from Eurystheus either, who said that this labor did not count since Heracles had worked for hire, and packed him off to chase away the Stymphalian birds. These were the property of Ares. They had brazen claws, rings, and beaks, could mulch their fellows at well, which sped down like sharp arrows, and ate human flesh. Athena advised Heracles not to go near them, for so sharp were their beaks, that by flying straight at a man, they could pierce even the hardest armor. But she lent him a pair of brazen castanets, which Hephaestus had made specially, and he went up onto a mountain, overlooking the deep pool of Stymphalus, which was surrounded by dense woods. 